So welcome. It is Finish It Fridays and um, I am here every Friday at 3 p.m. during the month of February to show you my works in progress, my whips and any UFOs that I uncover in the deep dark recesses of my closets and cupboards and to show you some of the other whips that I have not knit but I am helping to finish. So I'll start with my sock. So this is one sock completely finished and it's a new pattern that I'm going to um, write up for next week. It's called Stairway Sock and I have the second one maybe a quarter of the way and I'm feeling a bit of second sock syndrome I don't know if you go through that too but um, after I do the first sock I have a hard time completing the second sock it's just it's a bit too repetitive but I know I'll get it done eventually it's a good filler project if I'm in between larger projects and I want something small on the needles and portable so I could take that in the car if I'm waiting for an appointment um, I could take it to work but I really don't get any knitting done at work unfortunately it's always busy at the door and getting orders packed up and ready to send out so this sock is knit in the opal the German sock yarn and it is called magic sky so it's a special colorway that produces stripes and little lurex effect which creates the twinkle stars. So I'll bring that one up closer to the camera and you can see one sock. So one sock finished. I'm feeling that great sense of accomplishment. And it's a very easy pattern. It's just ribbing and then a play on the ribbing by moving one stitch over every fourth row and it creates a diagonal rib. The fun part is in the second sock because I'm making the diagonal rib go the opposite way. I just thought it would look funny if there's two socks and they're both leaning to the left. So one sock will lean to the right and one sock will lean to the left. So that is my sock whip. Do you have any socks on the needles right now? Hi Debbie, hi Mary, hi Cindy. I think we have sound now, Cindy, I hope we do. Um, so that is my smallest project. And then I started a brand new project just because I felt like I needed something fresh on the needle. So I decided to knit up a little late winter vest. And I've completed the back. This is something that I'm thinking I might want to wear over a dress to give me a bit more warmth. And uh, it's just going to be a round crew neck sleeveless vest. I can bring this one up to show you the detail. So you can see there's a little side panel on each side that carries on from the ribbing. The ribbing is what's called a beaded rib, so it's not a standard knit one, purl one. It almost has a seed stitch effect in between. So I'm carrying up the same pattern on both sides to the underarm, and I will finish the armhole borders and the neck border with the beaded rib. And I have the front on the needles. I'm working on, um, I think I'm working on a seven millimeter. Yes. So it goes very, very quickly. And the yarn I've chosen is Natural Llama Chunky. This is all undyed, so the colors are very warm and natural and earthy. And it's a combination of llama and merino in a chunky or bulky weight. So there is the light gray and the light fawn. And I'm using a warm parchment shade. 
very neutral. So I plan to have that vest done this weekend and then I'll be able to wear it next week. There's really not much to it. So that is project number two. And what I've really wanted to work on every evening is my granny stripe blanket. I started it um, I think it was last week or the week before and I put a progress marker in so you can see how far I've gone since last week. So a progress marker is just a little clip-in marker. Well, there it is. I'll bring it up so you can see it closer. So I am a crochet queen sometimes. There's my progress marker. That's where I was last Friday. And this is worked out of leftover fingering weight and soft yarns. So now I think I've completed um, almost three sections. Each section I'm finishing with two rows of a halo yarn which is kid mohair and silk and then I start again into whatever colors at random I pick. So it is really a very satisfying project. Um, crochet goes very quickly for those of you who do crochet. You know that one row is like doing four rows of knitting so you get a lot of satisfying um, results and it's very free form and very simple to do. I'll, I'll show you how to do the double crochet stitch. It's basically three double crochets in each space. It's like the traditional granny square blanket, but instead of going in squares, I'm going in stripes. And I will post the link to the pattern in the comments below. I think last week a few of you have started your own version of this blanket. So it'd be great to see some pictures posted in our events page called Finish It Fridays. Hi Judy, yes, a vest is so cozy, especially for this time of the year where sleeves get a bit too bulky under a jacket and you just need something to keep your back warm until spring. And yeah, so quite a few people have been asking, what do I do if I don't have um, leftover bits of yarn. Well, what I've been doing is using one of the self-striping sock yarns as sort of a base color and then I introduce all my bits and pieces as I go. So you could always start with something in the color choice of your liking. You could do greens and blues or you could do autumn tones, pinks and blues, and then we have a denim blue gray mix. There's lots of other colors too in the store. This is just an example of what I had at hand today. So once I get um, the base self-striping color, one ball is going to do a huge amount of the blanket, but for variety I'm just throwing in all my bits and bobs. And I think it, it worked out that it takes about 40 yards to do two rows. So I, I try to go across one way and then back and then that I consider one stripe and then I'll start a new color and get two rows again for one stripe. And I'm doing 16 rows or eight stripes and then I'm working two rows in the fluffy yarn which is over here and I'm working the whole blanket on a four millimeter hook. It's very adjustable. You could do all chunky weight yarns and then you could use a um, seven millimeter hook. You could do all worsted weight yarns and then you could use five or six millimeter. And for the fingering weight, it just works up nicely on the four. 
So this is the fluff that I'm using in between just to break up the texture and give it a nice soft halo effect. And I am using cream and the pale sky blue so far. If I have any leftovers of any of these colors, the pale pink, the misty gray, or the misty lilac, then I may use those as well. Other than that, there's no rhyme or reason to the colors I pick. It's just something that would appeal to a little girl because the goal is to have it as a gift for a special little girl. So we do have lots of different colors in the fluff. Darker colors, medium colors, and the light colors. I have my hook in here, so why, why don't I just show you the stitch that I'm doing. Yeah, I think anytime you have leftover sock yarns, it'd be great to um, knit up children's socks for donations or mittens. Um, baby hats would be great. They never go to waste, right Judy? Oh, Debbie's already started her. She's anxious to get to the second row. That's the thing. When you have so many colors, you can't put it down because you just want to see what the next color looks like against the last color and so on and so on. And Sandy is asking, if you're using a base color, do you need to break the yarn? No, actually not. But don't worry about this monstrosity of ends. I know it scares anyone that I've shown this week. Um, so yes, if you're using a base color, you could do two rows, drop the base yarn, and then introduce a new color, and then carry up the base yarn past the two new, new rows, and you wouldn't have to cut it each time. So that would cut your yarn ends down considerably. But again, don't be scared off by the jungle here it's really not a big deal in crochet because I'm going to work a border around the blanket I just wouldn't leave the edge raw and unfinished so once I work the border around with whatever colors I have left over I simply just crochet over those ends and they're completely hidden and secured it's not like knitting where we have to weave in our ends very carefully Crochet creates like a little channel. Every stitch has a, um, a channel where the ends can be hidden right through the center of it. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you the basic crochet stitch I'm using. So this is my four millimeter hook. I'm using a wooden hook, Knitter's Pride Dream. And as you can see, I've put three double crochets in one space. So my next three double crochets are going in this space here, which is much easier than actually aiming for a stitch. So my yarn over the hook into the space, so right into the big hole. Bring the yarn through, yarn over, come through two loops, yarn over again, come through two. So that's one double crochet. And then I would just put two more double crochets into the same space. There you go, so three and three in here. And then at the very end, I finish in that little space with two double crochets. And then I chain three, turn, and I start back on the next row. Very easy peasy. So this particular blanket, I think I measured last week on camera, will be five feet wide. So I'm going to aim for 60 inches in length and then the border will add another 2 inches or 3 inches. Um, the best thing about crochet is you can crochet a chain 
to whatever length or width you want and then you can work your first row of the pattern and you don't have to use the entire length of the chain so it's always good to crochet a little bit extra chain until you decide the width you want and then you simply unpick the extra chains at the end the ones that you haven't used whereas in knitting you have to know exactly how many stitches you're casting on you can't just leave any by the wayside so that's my favorite project right now I just absolutely love it but I have to um, limit myself or else I would just sit in the evening and do nothing else and yes Elizabeth the vest wool is the best it is it's so soft and squishy and if I have it done next week I will wear it with the dress that I have intended to make it um, part of the outfit um, so Andrew is asking could you suggest a knitted bits and bobs blanket okay my tension when crocheting is terrible but would be interested in knitting one okay well I happen to have a pattern in the store which is also knit with leftovers so maybe I'll just um, step off camera for a minute and get that for you and you can see it So this is called the No Rules Afghan. And it is designed as a scrappy blanket for all your leftovers. Um, it's one that I designed many, many years ago. So you can find the pattern on Ravelry and in store. And it really could not get any simpler. You're basically knitting strips. So whatever time it takes you to knit a scarf, is how long it will take you to knit one strip and there's no rules because if you run out of a certain color you don't have to worry it's not meant to match up to the next panel the stripes are just all individual and it does have a crochet border to give it a bit more body and strength but a lot of people who don't crochet are just doing garter stitch so you can pick up your stitches and knit the borders instead it is knit on 5.5 millimeter needle um, and it's worked with an assortment of yarn weights so worsted weight is good you can use two strands of DK or you could use three strands of sock weight together and it's really fun to blend some of the colors. Um, some of the tweed colors, I've actually taken two totally different colors in sock weight or three different colors and worked them together. So it gives you a nice marled effect. Some people have put together all their yarn colors that might be in very pale pastels and worked from that color scene. Some people have worked from uh, neutrals. Some people have worked from you know very specific colors this one is just all the cabin colors reds blues golds grays nice warm blanket and then the way you're uh, seaming it together you have your strip and then you're going to have one strip sewn together with the stocking stitch facing out which is the knit side and then the next strip is with the purl side out so it gives a, a different texture and effect so that's an idea if you're looking for something to knit up a little bit quicker and have a bit more warmth. It's a heavier weight than the crochet blanket I'm working on now. Perfect for all your scraps. So I hope that inspired you Andrea to put together some colors. 
And again, if you don't have a really good stash of colors, I mean a yarn store has boxes and boxes and boxes of stash yarn. Um, you can always start with one or two main colors and work from there. So you could maybe pick something like a gray tweed. You could pick something like this, a gray tweed and then maybe a red and then see what colors you have at home or colors you can borrow or steal from other knitting friends to work into your color scheme. Very free form again. So that is project number three that I'm working on. I haven't really made much progress on my Blendon Woods cardigan. Um, I've sewn together one front to the back, but I still have another front to start and complete. And then I have, I think, half a sleeve left to work on. So I really have to get busy on that one. But look at this gorgeous version of the Blendon Woods cardigan. This was from our Cardi Cal, which ended uh, last month. And this was knit by one of our knit alongers. She has completely finished knitting it. It just came in for a little bit of finishing work, putting the sleeve in. So she still has her sleeve seams to sew and I think the side seam and she does have to block it. Um, but I just wanted to show it because it's gorgeous. The color has such rich shading in it. There's little bits of green and there's little bits of red, dark gray, just tweedy little bits. So I think she's done a wonderful job. What do you think? And I think we should give her some help with finishing. So I put in a shawl pin, just as an example, to hold it closed. And this is one of our um, wooden shawl pins, handmade. So it has that unique unicorn twist and the beaded top. So let's give her some opinions. Do you think it should be left open to wear with the option of a shawl pin? Or do you think she should finish it with crocheted button loops, which would be along the edge? And then she could put on either one wooden button or two or three. So I have four wooden buttons to show that would pick up her colors. This is a medium, I think it's a medium beech wood. And this one has quite a bit of wood grain, so I think it might fight with the um, pattern work. And this is a warm walnut. And the last one's a little bit smaller. It's very detailed and ornate in a medium walnut. Okay, so we have button number one in beach. Button number two, which I know you're going to rule out because it is quite a busy wood grain, although it is striking. And button number three, which is walnut. And button number four is a little smaller and it's quite ornate. It's all carved in walnut. So we will give our knitter some feedback on that. So she's done a lovely job. She had to pick up all the stitches in one go for the entire shawl collar border. She had to work short rows, which gives it a wider width at the top around the neck. Knit two purl two ribbing. And she's worked the honeycomb pattern quite beautifully all the way up through the sleeves, increasing while she goes. 
and then the A-line shaping. See if I can spin it around, then you can see the back detail. <laughs> so all the A-line shaping, shaping is happening right in the center section, in between the zigzag cable and the XO cable. So she'll be able to block that out quite nicely. Gorgeous, and that is the Blendon Woods cardigan which is available on Ravelry. Designed by Carrie Bloomer. and it is knit in the Echo Tweed DK, which I have here in the bowl. So it is classic looking English tweed, but much, much softer and lighter. It's a true DK tension, but it is a combination of organic wool, alpaca, and Lyocell. So I think for my size, uh, the beige cardigan, I'm using five skeins and for this one, I think it might be six skeins. Okay, so we've got uh, an opinion. The shawl pin. Yeah, the shawl pin would be very decorative and a little bit different. Plus, you could use it on other cardigans, shawls, and vests. So it's very versatile. If she goes with a button or two, then those buttons are sewn on for good. Oh, I think most of you like the shawl pin option. I think I like it too. Um, okay, and then I want to go over my UFO that I've unearthed. Another one that I should have finished years ago, but I haven't. Can anyone guess what it is? or will be. This part might give it away. So this is called the Afterthought Everything Sock and it's a technique where you would knit a tube. So you would knit a complete tube which would be two socks in one. So you start at the top, you cast on to your ribbing, stocking stitch and then you knit in a little marker thread which is um, to designate where the heel will go and then you would knit in another marker thread here for the second heel and then finish the ribbing and cast off. So I've already gone ahead here and worked the second heel the marker here is where I'm going to insert the two toes and that's when it becomes a full pair of socks. So the marker thread here is a different color, just some scrap yarn, and that is to show me where I would start picking up stitches. So I would pick up all the stitches on one needle and then pick up the top of that row opening on a second needle and that's where I would start doing the afterthought heel and the afterthought heel looks like this when it's complete and then I would do the same thing here I would unpick the stitches where the center marker is all onto two needles and then the other side onto two needles and I would work one toe shaping in my contrast color and graft the uh, stitches and then I would work the second toe and graft the stitches. So it's a unique way of doing a pair of socks. Um, we did a, a workshop a few years ago and this was my, my demo sock. So if you're interested in finding out more about how to do the Afterthought Everything Sock, I will add the um, 
the link. There's a great video tutorial that you can watch and the instructor goes through kind of like the recipe or the formula for creating a pair of socks in this method. It's been around for a few years and it probably was um, created after watching people knit tube socks and it's called cranking. So there's a special sock knitting machine and you can turn the handle and create a tube and then you can insert the heels and the toes after. So that is my unfinished object for this week. Probably will never get finished because it was it was really just for a workshop so I don't think I need to finish it at this point. There's other things more, more pressing. Now I also have another uh, work in progress here. This was knit by our new grandmother, uh, Lorraine, and it happens to be her birthday today. So happy birthday to Lorraine. And she was um, able to have the best birthday gift ever. She has a brand new granddaughter six days ago, baby Harper. So this will be for baby Harper. And she's knit two in different colors, the teddy jacket. She's knitting a pale pink one now that she knows it's a girl. And this one, she just brought it in so that I could do some finishing and add some teddy bear ears at the very top of the hood. So we have another dilemma. We have to help her pick buttons. So again, we're, we're going through the same four buttons that um, we looked at for Evelyn's. And there are three button holes. So any of these buttons would work. So this is button number one, which is the filigree walnut. It does look quite dainty and feminine. And then button number two, which is more of a golden tone in the beach. All handcrafted in Ontario. And then there is the um, zebra stripe wood grain. And then number four is the plain walnut. So this is button number one, the filigree. It's a nice size. And then button number two, which is really the same color as the yarn, might not provide enough contrast. And button number three is the um, wood grain and the stripes. Quite nice. And button number four is the walnut. So let's give some um, opinions to the knitter because she wants to get this one in the mail, I think on Monday. Okay, so while you're giving opinions on the buttons, um, I've shown all these yarns. Yes, yeah, so I've shown all my whips today. But I thought it'd be fun to go through uh, knitter's vocabulary words because we talk about whips, we talk about UFOs, we talk about FOs, which are finished objects. And I know a lot of you are learning the lingo more and more as you're knitting. A lot of these words will apply to crocheting too. But there's some really fun, fun ones on here that I have never heard before. So I'm going to read each one out and then I'll give you a second to think about it and then I will give you the full meaning. And if, if you want to comment what you think it, is, it might be, you can uh, feel free to go ahead. Okay, so alphabetically, all knitter. All knitter is a knitting marathon that results in sleep lost or knitting all night. I've done that before and I didn't know it was called an all knitter. DS, so it's a capital D and a capital S. What does that stand for?
It stands for destash. To destash is to sell or trade unwanted yarn. Well, that might come in handy if you're thinking of doing the granny stripe blanket or the no rules afghan. You might be able to find a knitterly friend who is willing to um, sell or trade. FO, well, we know that one, finished object. Frogging. Frogging is the art of ripping out your stitches when you've made a mistake. And that word um, is related to ripping. So when you say ripping, you're basically referring to rip it, rip it, which sounds like a frog, ribbit, ribbit. So frogging is a term that's been around for oh, a few, few decades. Oh, I love this one, hiber knitting. One of my favorite activities in the winter that is retreating into your own world of knitting. And H-O-T-N. Does anyone know that uh, term? That is um, hot off the needle. So we could say this one is hot off the needles, even though it needs a bit more seaming. K-A-L, we know that one, knit along. And if you're uh, joining a crochet group, it is a C-A-L, which is also cal. K-I-P, or kip. <laughs> kip is knitting in public. And that is something we really haven't been able to do much of in the last almost year. So hopefully, uh, when the weather's nicer this summer, you'll see more people kipping or knitting in public. Another favorite of mine is knit flicks or knit flixing. The act of knitting while streaming binge-worthy shows on Amazon, Netflix, or Hulu. Another uh, activity to be working on this weekend, knit picking. There is one term for nitpicking, but it has nothing to do with this one. The dreaded and time-consuming weaving in of the ends when a project is finished. Not everybody's favorite job to do. Knit trauma. Oh, I think a lot of us are going through this one, especially this month. Knit trauma is when you have several UFOs started but feel the need to buy more patterns and yarn, etc. And I think Nancy was asking me last week, what is the term for when you have so many projects, but you want more? So I think knit trauma might um, be what you were thinking of. This one is very cute, nitty litter. Not kitty litter, it's nitty litter. The knitting related items that collect all over the home when one knits or crochets. And the next one is KUI. So that's KUI. And Judy is a, definitely a hybrid knitter. Yeah, definitely. If you live in. <laughs> Northern Ontario, you have to be. KUI is knitting under the influence, which often results in having to frog what you've worked. So a glass of wine is something that could cause all sorts of havoc in your knitting. LYS, well, you should all know that one because that is local yarn store. LYSO is your local yarn store owner, which would be me, Michelle, OKD, so OKD, obsessive knitting disorder. How many of us have that? I, for one, have OKD and I'm quite proud of it. And the next one is OTN, on the needles. 
So I do have an on the needles project, my vest. And then the next one is PhD. Does anyone know PhD? It's a common one. I'll let you guess that one and I'll go on to the next. The next one is called PIGS. Not pigs in blankets, just pigs. And that stands for Project in Grocery Sack. So that is a no-no. You should never have your project in a plastic bag. First of all, the needles can poke through and drop and get lost in the snow. And secondly, it just doesn't look very professional. You should always have your project in a nice, um, a nice project bag or a tote bag or a basket. So back to PhD, has anyone guessed it yet? I'm still waiting. Uh, pooling. When colors in variegated yarn clump together, creating big splotches or pools of color. So that quite often happens in a variegated yarn, which I could give you an example of. So this would be variegated which means no matter how you knit it, it will not form perfect stripes. It has a mind of its own, so sometimes it can do zigzags, sometimes it will do diamonds, sometimes it will do just splotches. So the best way to knit variegated yarns is with two uh, skeins or two balls. That way you can break up the pooling or to knit it in um, Isle or with another colorway, a solid color to break up all the pooling. Okay, back to PhD. Nobody has guessed it yet. Projects half done, which is also known as a UFO. Um, procrastinating. I think we're all guilty of this. Knitting when you should be doing something else, but all you want to do is knit. Sable, S-A-B-L-E, stands for Stash Acquisition Beyond Life Expectancy. So that's something I don't think any of us want to admit to, but it happens. It's just part of the whole um, concept of knitting or making, quilting, sewing. Once you love something, you just build up a stash. SIP, S-I-P, stands for, aha, uh -huh, I've got one, Socks in Progress. That's my SIP. Squishy Mail. <laughs> Squishy Mail is a yarn delivery. So when you get something in the mailbox that feels a bit like a pillow, you can pinch it with your fingers, you know inside is a beautiful skein or two or more of yarn. Stash, a knitter's collection of yarn often bordering on addiction. Tink, that's T-I-N-K, and if you spell tink backwards, what does it spell? Our favorite word, knit. So tink refers to when you are undoing your knitting one stitch at a time to correct a mistake. So you don't confuse tink with frogging. Frogging is when you take it off the needles and you're ripping and ripping and ripping. So either you're going back to the very beginning or you're undoing 10 rows, 20 rows. Tinking is a very um, meticulous maneuver. You're just using your needle and undoing one stitch pulling the wool out, undoing the next stitch, pulling the wool out, and you're going backwards. You're turning around your work and going the opposite way. Oh, I love this one too. This is a new one to me. Toad, T-O-A-D. It's a four letter word. It stands for trashed object abandoned in disgust. Trashed object abandoned in disgust. I, I don't think I've ever had a toad 
if I put something in the corner or time out, I usually pick it up again and finish it. Does anyone else have a toad? Okay, we're almost through the list. UFO, we know, is unfinished object, and that is usually an abandoned or neglected whip, something that you just gave up on and or forgot about. UFO syndrome, the urge to start a new knitting project despite many UFOs already started. Vanilla, a simple, easy knitting pattern. So that would be a very plain pair of socks. So if you're on Ravelry, you can look up vanilla socks and it's a great um, recipe just for any self-striping yarn or you can implement your own texture or design elements into it. Whip is work in progress. Yarn bomb, uh, knitted or crocheted street art. We, uh, we had some yarn bombing in our Memorial Park in Bracebridge, I think it was last year. Um, very decorative, and I'm sure a lot of your towns have had yarn bombing somewhere. It's something just to make a statement and to create some social interest. Um, I don't think it's really meant to be reused after the fact. It's artwork, really. And the last one is also the best one of all, it is Yarny, a lover of all that is yarn. Well, that applies to all of us, whether you're a knitter, crocheter, um, needle felter, needle pointer, rug hooker, you're using yarn. So I think that is everything I wanted to show you today. Um, again, please um, check out our events page finish it Fridays and have a look at some of the other um, projects that are well on their way to being finished or have been finished. There is another Blend in Woods cardigan that was just posted today, completely finished and blocked. It's absolutely stunning. And I think Andrea posted her Garden Gate top down pullover, which has really, really intricate ferrule here. And she's past the Garden Gate. So she's on the home stretch. So great work, Andrea. And I will be back next um, Friday for another uh, edition of Finish It Fridays. And hopefully I've made more progress and hopefully you have too. It's always great inspiration to um, just let others see what you're working on. I think it really helps us get through this kind of a slump that we're in. Have a great weekend, everyone.